Hello everyone, this is Dennis, and you are on the Den Electro channel. Today we will assemble a two-channel audio amplifier. We will assemble it on the TDA2050 chip. It is similar to the TDA2030 and TDA2040 chip. They all have the same circuit, but the TDA2050 has the highest power. The chip is similar to a transistor but has five legs. The first pin receives an audio signal, also called non-inverting input. The second leg is the inverting input. The signal from the amplifier output is supplied here for feedback operation. The third pin is supplied with minus power. The fourth pin is the audio amplifier output. And the fifth is a plus of nutrition. I'll take the diagram from the datasheet. Despite its power, the amplifier circuit is very simple and there are few details in it. The circuit is powered by a bipolar supply from 5 to 25 volts. The plus should be applied to the fifth leg and the minus to the third. Contacts marked G and D are ground. They are connected to the middle point of the power source. Capacitors C5, C3, C4, and C6 must be selected for the voltage at which you will use the amplifier. Speakers can be used with impedance from 4 to 8 ohms. If the circuit is slightly altered and a couple of parts are added, then the amplifier can be powered from a single polar supply with voltage up to 50 volts. But for my amplifier, I will still use bipolar power supply. Now let's look at the characteristics in the datasheet and find out the power that the TDA2050 can produce. I will use a 4 ohm load and I will be guided by this parameter. We look here and find out that with such speakers, you can squeeze out 35 watts. True. At such power, there will already be 10% signal distortion. And this is not very good. But at 28 watts, the distortion is only 0.5%. At lower power, the nonlinear distortion coefficient will be completely minimal. The amplifier efficiency is written below. On average, about 65%. This does not seem like a lot, but for a class AB amplifier, this is normal. And of course, the microcircuit has over temperature protection. After 150 degrees, it will turn off. There is also such an interesting table in the datasheet. All the parts that make up the amplifier are described here. It says here what they serve and what will happen if their denominations are changed up or down. If you are assembling the same amplifier, I recommend that you familiarize yourself with it. I also took the layout for the printed circuit board from the datasheet. I only made a small change to it. I moved capacitor C1 and made a jumper where it stood. And this board layout also has a small disadvantage. There is only one contact for connecting the speaker. And there is no place to connect the second speaker contact. It must connect to ground. Apparently, the developers of this board assumed that the amplifier would have another connection point for the speaker. As usual, I make boards for my homemade products using laser cardboard technology. There is still a lot of space left on the dress, as it is reserved for the subwoofer amplifier. I will show you how to make it in one of the following videos. And if it is already ready, the link will appear in the upper right corner. Then we make a hole in the dress with a needle and install the parts there. On the back side of the board, we connect everything with jumpers. The 100 nanofarad capacitors C3 and C4 look like this. I took the denominations C5 and C6 a little lower than those indicated in the data sheet. Instead of 220 microfarads, I set it to 100. These capacitors are used to power the micro circuit and therefore do not affect the sound quality in any way. 
I assembled capacitor C7 from two series connected capacitors, one microfarad each. Their total capacity in this case will be 0.5 microfarads. And the capacity indicated in the datasheet is 0.47 microfarads. And instead of the 2.2 ohm resistor R4, I installed a jumper. Then you will need a wire soldered to the mini jack. Wires need to be made. Fine ground, left contact and right contact. Please note that I'm using regular wires. This is not entirely correct, since the quality of the audio signal will be affected by various electromagnetic interference. Therefore, you should always use a shielded wire from the mini jack to the amplifier input. The wire shield must be connected to ground. To adjust the volume, I will use a double potentiometer. It has six pins, three contacts per channel. By rotating the knob, you can change the volume in the left and right channels simultaneously. Its marking is B503. This means that its resistance is 50 kilo ohms. The amplifier input will be here. This is where I will feed the left channel. The power supply and speaker output will be connected here. Then the chips need to be placed on radiators. You can take two separate ones like mine or one common one. Keep in mind that there is a power minus on the radiator, as well as on the flange of the microcircuit. Therefore, you should not short any wires to it. During testing, I installed small radiators made of thin aluminum. But if you use the amplifier at maximum voltage and maximum power, then you will need much more massive radiators. Then you need to solder all the wires, power supply and signal. I also added two power jumpers. From the right channel to the left, power plus and minus will pass through them. The ground of both channels will be jumpered on the other side of the board. After connecting the power, some background noise is heard from the speakers. But you can't hear it very much, but only when you lean towards the speaker. Now the volume control is at a minimum, and therefore when I touch the mini jack, there is no sound coming from the speakers. If the volume is increased, the background becomes louder. Now when you touch the jack, you can hear a clicking sound. When I insert the mini jack into the phone, a characteristic crackling sound comes from the speakers. After this, the background volume decreases. To test the amplifier, I will use Soviet speakers S30A. I'm very pleased with the sound quality of the amplifier. All frequencies high, mid, low are felt very well. Although, of course, the video camera recording could not convey this entire spectrum. If you want to get rid of the background and make the sound cleaner, then the amplifier must be grounded. That is, connect to the ground that is in your sockets. If, of course, she is there. Well, if you use shielded wires, then the result will be ideal. Also keep in mind that this amplifier will also require a powerful power supply. Of course, it can also work from a weak unit with a power of 10, 15 watts. But in this case, when the volume increases, the voltage on the power supply will begin to sag. That's all for today. Give it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ask questions if something is unclear to someone and for now.